Gaussian processes are a hugely powerful tool for regression, not to mention the fact that they occupy a very special place in the theory of probability. And besides all that, they're really fun uh, to play with, and they're beautiful, actually, to visualize. So maybe I'll mention just a few applications of Gaussian processes. Perhaps the most widely, you know, the area in which they're most widely used is what's called geostatistics, which is, roughly speaking, modeling spatial aspects of the world on sort of a large scale, and things like geology and oceanography and meteorology and so on. And yet a, another application, very different, of Gaussian processes is to things which are evolving over time. You know, like, for example, if you want to, to track an object over time, where it's going, like, like an airplane you want to track. And yet another completely different application is to finance. And Gaussian processes are very often used in finance and, and physics. And I mean, there's just a litany of applications, physics, diffusion processes, and, and all this stuff. Okay, so that's applications, and let's start out. What is this beast? What is, what is this mysterious Gaussian process? Well, we can start right off the bat with a definition. So for any set S, a Gaussian process, or process, you might say, depending on where you're from, which we'll often abbreviate GP, On a Gaussian process on S is a set or a collection set of random variables, which I'll denote in this way. Maybe I'll use I'll use Z because I want to use X for something else. So it's a bunch of random variables Z T that are indexed by this these elements T which are in the set S. I'll put these parentheses rather than a set, but I could have put a set set braces here. And it is so it's a set of random variables like this such that they have the following property for any yeah, I'll put it down here for any n and for any t1 up to tn so there's going to be n t's in s the vector z t1 up to z, that's a big comma, z t n, that vector, is a Gaussian. It's, it's Gaussian distributed. It's a multivariate. Whenever we say a vector is Gaussian, we of course mean it's multivariate Gaussian. So that is the definition of a Gaussian process. And this part here, well, these finite dimensional distributions, you know, for each subset, the each finite subset of indices T1 through Tn, the distribution on that finite set of random variables is what's called the finite dimensional distributions. Th those sets of distributions are called the, the finite dimensional distributions. That's just a little terminology for you. So if you're not familiar with multivariate Gaussians, you are going to need to watch or somehow learn learn about multivariate Gaussians. Otherwise, the rest of this section is, is going to be hopeless. So let's first look at a couple very simple examples. So the first example is actually, is actually going to be a trivial example, but it's to make it make this seem a little less mysterious to you. So the first example is we can take s to just be some integers, 1 through d. And then we can take this collection of random variables, which I'll often, I'll often abbreviate this by just this open paren, just z, t in parens, rather than write this all out. This is then just the vector z1 up to zd a vector in Rd, a random vector. And if we put some Gaussian distribution on this, some multivariate Gaussian distribution, then, you know, any, but of course, any subset of those random variables is going to be multivariate Gaussian. That follows by the affine property of Gaussian distributions. And so this satisfies this definition, right? Because it's, it's, uh, 
it's a collection of random variables on this set s and for any subset of those random variables that subset is Gaussian distributed so this is this is actually I mean you if you know what a multivariate Gaussian is then then this is the first example of a Gaussian process that you can sort of just very easily get your head wrapped around but in some sense this is just this is too trivial this is this is not really this is doesn't really capture the full flavor of what's going on here so here's a little less tr trivial this was this may be the simplest possible Gaussian process that is non-trivial so this one will be random lines random lines this was just a multivariate Gaussian. So for this example, second example, we'll take S to be the real number. So we're going to have an uncountable collection of random variables here. So now things are starting to get interesting. And we'll take ZT, we'll define ZT to be T times W, where W is a random variable that is let's say it's just a normal random variable with zero mean and unit variance so it's just a standard normal uh, a standard normal random variable so this is just in R now before we verify the definition maybe just I'll draw the picture of what's what this is doing let's draw whoa that's a terrible drawing draw the picture here so if we draw a value if we draw a value of W let's put uh, let's put Z so Z T is going to be on this axis and this is going to be T here so if we draw a value of W let's say we draw maybe um, maybe we get like 0.2 or something so I'm going to draw the value of W uh, on this vertical line here that I'm indicating. So maybe point 0.2 is right around there. And then what is ZT? Well, ZT is just T times W. So if W was point 0.2, then when T is 1, then ZT is going to be point 0.2. And when T is 1 half, then ZT is going to be point 0.1 and so on and it's just going to follow along this line right here this straight line straight line and it, when it, when t is zero of course zt will be zero and so on so it's just the straight line that goes through zero in that point if we drew another if if w on some other if we sampled w again and we got a different value maybe we got that whatever that is then zt this this collection of random variables is going to look like this so maybe let me just pause for a second here to say what I'm drawing and each value T like here for example this is like one minus one half there is a random variable Z minus one half this value here is Z minus one half the value that 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 this takes here is a random variable and it's it's the the one that's in this collection with the index minus one half and likewise for any other t there is some random variable okay so now if we were to draw um, a bunch of other values of w so maybe we got that one then we would get the line that goes through zero and that point and maybe if we if we had a whole bunch of others they're they're going to be normally distributed so they're going to look something like this maybe normally distributed because it's w is a standard normal and so we're going to get all these lines oh, they all have to go through the origin something like this so if we were to draw successively successive samples of zt of this this gaussian process they would look like this they would just be these random lines and let's verify that this is in fact a Gaussian process so what do we have to 
check, we have to check that these vectors, zt1 up to ztn, are always multivariate Gaussian. So let's let t1 through tn be some real numbers. That's what our set S is. And then we have to verify that this vector is multivariate Gaussian. Let's write down, let's write it this way. Well, what is this? This is just t1, I'll put it over here. This is just t1 times w down to tn w. And we can just factor out the w here. If we think of w as being, well, it is a constant, but we can also think, it, think of it as being a one by one matrix. And we can think of this as being a n by one matrix. And since w, this is sort of what we can apply the affine transformation property of multivariate random, very, uh, uh, blah, multivariate Gaussian random variables in a sort of very peculiar way because we're going to think of this as a one by one multivariate random variable, uh, multivariate Gaussian. And so we multiply by a matrix and we know by the affine property that that is also multivariate normal. So A, this is our AE matrix here. And therefore, this is multivariate normal or Gaussian, multivariate Gaussian. So this is indeed, and, you know, and that holds, of course, for any T1 through Tn. So this is indeed a Gaussian process. Okay, so those were just some super simple examples. And soon we're going to take a look at some much more interesting examples of Gaussian processes.